today we're coming to you from the butterfly field. Hi everyone, welcome back to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Conservation Connect, the place where you learn about exciting careers, cool species, and the latest technology that conservation professionals use to study and protect wildlife. Here in West Virginia, the monarch butterflies have been flying all summer long. Now that the weather is cooled, monarchs from all over are ready to take their long journey to their wintering grounds. Join me now as we learn about this fascinating and beautiful species. To tell us more about monarchs, I have U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service biologist Tracy McLeaf, our monarch expert. Tracy, can you talk to us about how you got interested in monarchs? Well, when I was growing up, my grandmother was always really interested in monarchs, and as that, with that influence, I really became interested in nature and insects. And in college, I studied insects and a little bit of butterflies, and then when I had the chance here at the National Conservation Training Center to study monarchs, I jumped at it, and it's been great. They're really interesting creatures. Now, I have heard that monarchs can migrate hundreds of miles. Is that really true? Yeah, actually, they can fly thousands of miles. Um, the ones we tag here at NCTC will fly over 2,300 miles to get their overwintering grounds in Mexico. Now, how do we know this to be true that monarchs are migrating thousands of miles? Because of the tags that we put on the monarchs. Now, wait a minute. I've heard of you know, large mammals like elk or caribou having these big radio collars that can carry all this information and data. But monarchs are really tiny. Yes. How can you put a transmitter on a monarch to we collect get, that's data? That's a great question. We get asked that a lot. We don't have any little tiny wee radio transmitters that we're using. What we actually use are stickers. They're just plain, simple, low-tech stickers. It's got um, an email address and a phone number. So if you find a butterfly with one of these tags, you call it and report it, and Monarch Watch, in the case of these tags, will, will track that data, and then we know where the butterfly started and, and where it got found. To help us look for monarchs was our youth host, Travis. All right, Travis, are you ready to catch some butterflies? I'm ready to catch some butterflies. All right, Tracy, what do we need to do? Well, what we're gonna do is kind of go out here in the field and see if we can shake some up with our brush beater net, and with your butterfly nets, if you happen to come up on one on the flower, you can come up behind it. If you hold your net up high over it, they'll tend to fly up when they scare. Okay. And then you can bring it down, and then as you come down across it, you'll, you'll flip your net so that you capture the butterfly inside the net. And you'll hold it gently as you come back here, we'll, and we'll try to tag it. Um, best way to catch them if they're flying is just run after them and try to scoop them up. <laughs> yeah, it's really kind of fun. All right, well, we're ready. Are you ready? Yep, and I think I just saw one over there. We should go try to catch it. Let's head over there. All right, Tracy, show us the monarchs. Where are they? After some searching, we spotted one flying just ahead. There's one. Oh, there he is. Here we go. It's this back. And then, when we thought we would be completely out of luck, Tracy spotted one down in the brush. Oh yes, I see it. Travis, right here. Right here, on this one. Travis slowly and gently crept towards the monarch and captured it right into his net. Beautiful. All right, good job. That's awesome. Travis, that was an incredible catch. Tracy, good eye on that one. What's What happens now? How do we tag this monarch? Well. I'll get the butterfly out of the net here, and Travis, let me hand you the tag. Now you can see see this spot right here. The yep. males will have that spot on both of the hind wings, and the females won't. And you can see it better when the when the butterfly opens its wings, and you're looking at the top of the butterfly. We always want to put the sticker in this cell right here that's kind of shaped yeah. like a mitten. Stick it there, get it off the paper clip if you can, and then just press it with your fingers. You just want to press it gently, hold it for a few seconds make sure it adheres. This doesn't hurt them, doesn't slow them down, and the stuff is, the biggest advance in these is the stickiness. The stuff has become stickier and stickier over it's here. It's not going anywhere. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. It'll stick with the butterfly until the end. 
So for data, it's important we record everything accurately. For data, can you read the... What is the tracking number There's on that? There's three letters and three numbers that identify this butterfly. Can UHC 420. UHC 420. I've got today's date. We've said that this is a... Male. A male. Okay. And how did we find him? Did we rear him or did we find him in the wild? We found him in the wild. So I'll put a W for wild and we want to put our location. Right. And then all this information is used by Monarch Watch and their citizen science projects, but this guy's probably on his way to Mexico. Well, I was going to say, this guy's probably had enough excitement for one morning. Do you think we should release him and let him get on his way? I think so, yes. Okay. He's got a long way to go. Ready? Yep. You can see the spots there real well when he opens his wings up. It's very evident that it's a male there. Yeah, and those actually have pheromones in them. And some butterflies, they're important in mating. And the females, those veins that you see, they'll be a lot thicker on the female than they are there on the male. But they're about the same He's being really cooperative. Yeah, he's probably like alien abduction, <laughs> wondering what happened to him. Oh, there he goes. Oh. All right. From their amazing life cycle to their incredible migration, monarchs are spectacular creatures. I know that I'm going to be ordering my own monarch tags and finding monarchs in my backyard next year. Maybe your school can create a pollinator garden, plant milkweed, or observe and tag monarchs as part of your class. We'll see you guys next time on the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Conservation Connect.